you were really perhaps the, the first female uh, lead vocalist in a British rock band. And from that, in, in a very male dominated genre and a very male dominated industry at the time, how, how, did, you, how did you find it in, in those days actually holding your own ground, if you like? Well, um, people, looking at it, people have asked me that um, recently. I was talking to somebody uh, who's doing an in interview with me about that, and people have such sort of very different ideas about. Um, I mean, I wasn't really particularly aware that it was a male-dominated industry. We didn't, one didn't sort of think in terms of, of that sort of thing in the kind of hippie hippie land, mm -hmm. because you know we were, you know, there were men, there were there were there were boys, and there were girls, and you know there wasn't really discrimination. We we weren't living in the fifties, you know. Sure. It, it, it was mm. this was the sixties, and 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 there was much that more um, between young people, you know, out, out and about playing and partying. And there was free love as well, that wonderful, wonderful gift that we had before AIDS and, and things, you know. So there was no chauvinism in, 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 in the hippie ideology. It was, you know, we were, we were spiritual, mystical beings with the musicians too, I mean, musicians were, I mean, they were, they was, it was more like, you know, they were more like sort of, you know, different, different kinds of gods, I suppose, in that respect, they became a, became a goddess, you know, if you have kings, you have queens, mm. you know, and, and, and it doesn't mean to say that one is superior to the other. I didn't really analyse what I was doing, because of having come from, having been sort of doing my own, my own thing with uh, sort of singer songwriter performances and, and doing choosing my own song, the songs that I wanted to sing and I was very much in charge of what I wanted to do. Always, there was nobody, nobody who dictated to me anything at any time really. I, in, in, in Hair, a lot of the time we were free. And then and in Curved Air, I contributed to the writing and, and I think I, because of my experience in, in Hair, I very quickly got these guys into a place where I could be very touchy-feely with them, mm. and we could just be. They, they were like my brothers, you know. They, it, it was, you know, we flirted a little bit. I, 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 I fancied the uh, our Rob Martin, who was our bass player, you know, so very, very moody and and, and uh, serious and very, very handsome. But they were all very good-looking, and you know. But we all, you know, we just could, kind of got a bond between us, and uh, that didn't have any sort of. There was there was no no um, uh, difference in in status between all of us, you know. And there was just you know my my role was to engage with the audience, and but they all, they also Francis was was very uh, very good at, at at playing the guitar with great enjoyment, mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 you know he's doing his his electronic sonic. Exp Ex odysseys on, yes. on the keyboard. I mean, he he just oozed kind of passion for for that. And and Daryl Daryl was would, would, was very flamboyant and loved putting on the show. And he liked all his explosions and.